Hello, now we're going to move on to, uh, to the next section uh, which covers the microcontroller's history and uh, features. There will be two sections that we're going to cover overall, um, microcontrollers and embedded processors and an overview of the PIC-18 family of microcontrollers which is the microcontroller that uh, we'll be looking at in the course uh, and learning about using as our, as our tool. In this objective, we're going to look at a comparison and contrast of microprocessors versus microcontrollers, and there is a difference. Describing the advantages of microcontrollers for some applications, the concept of embedded systems, and discussing the criteria for considering a microcontroller. We'll explain the variations associated with microcontrollers like speed, packaging, memory, and cost per unit and how they affect choosing a microcontroller. Comparing and contrasting the various members of the PIC family and comparing the PIC with microcontrollers offered by other manufacturers. The thing to keep in mind is that uh, this book is a little date dated, the information is a little dated, so uh, it may not be uh, up to today's um, standards. And in fact, the PIC-18 has, has been severely eclipsed by other um, controllers. So what we start with is a discussion of the role then of the importance of microcontrollers um, in everyday life. Uh, we'll take a, a look at the need for microcontrollers and contrast them with general purpose microprocessors which you're probably more familiar with because the microprocessor is what you find in most of your uh, your PCs, your, uh, your personal computers. Um, there are various flavors of microprocessors. We'll look at the role of the microcontroller with the, in the embedded market and then provide some criteria on how to choose the microcontroller. Um, looking at this, what's the difference between a microprocessor and a microcontroller? Well, by the microprocessor, we mean, and you can see the families here, 8086, 8286, 8386, 486, Pentium. And again, these are all uh, very, very old processors and legacy uh, type processors, but they have, they have some validity. Uh, and then finally, the Motorola PowerPC um, family of processors. These microprocessors contain no RAM, no ROM, no I.O. Uh, on the chip itself. So for this reason, they're commonly referred to as the general purpose microprocessor um, as part of the system. As a system designer using general purpose microprocessors such as the Pentium or the PowerPC, you must add RAM, ROM, I.O. ports and timers externally to make them functional. By itself, the CPU can do nothing, uh, nothing of any real value. I mean, it'll work, but it won't do any. It, it won't do anything for you. Although the addition of external RAM, ROM, and I.O. ports make these systems bulkier and much more expensive, they have the advantage of versatility. It enables the designer to decide the amount of RAM, the amount of ROM and I.O. needed to fit the task that it's being designed for. If it, this is not the case, then with, the, with microcontrollers, because everything is on board. A microcontroller, even a simple one, has a CPU, a microprocessor, in addition to a fixed amount of RAM, ROM, I.O., and a timer on all of the single chips. In other words, the processor, RAM, ROM, and I.O., and timer, timer are all embedded together in one single chip on the microcontroller. The designer cannot add any external memory, I.O., or a timer to it. The fixed amount of on-chip RAM and ROM and the number of I.O. ports in a microcontroller make them ideal for many applications in which cost and space are critical. In many applications, like a TV remote, there's no need for computing power of a larger microprocessor. In many applications, the space used, the power consumed, and the price per unit are much more critical considerations than the computing power. So it does not have uh, on your microprocessor 
um, it, it does not have these uh, these components needed to make it functional where on the microcontroller we've seen that every one of these um, are in fact and we're going to learn that as we move along through the course we're going to see that more and more so with these uh, with the microcontroller um, as an embedded system um, the product is controlled by its own internal processor RAM is usually burned into, uh, into the chip with a purpose for specific functions. Um, a printer is a good example of an embedded system. Typically only one application though is burned into ROM. Computer peripherals with microcontrollers will include a keyboard, a mouse, a printer, um, and a scanner. Typical applications for embedded systems, and as you look at these as this list, you can probably think of every application that you've encountered where there was probably a microcontroller on board, and you didn't really give it any thought. Uh, television remotes, TVs, your cameras, your phone, sewing machines, um, musical instruments, I mean everything. Um, there are toasters today that have embedded systems on them and refrigerators. So the list continues to grow um, as the applicability becomes more and more um, functional. Microcontrollers in the office, telephones, computers, microwaves, lots of examples and again continues to grow. In your car, your trip meter, the Air, uh, engine control, security system, climate control. High-end systems, uh, Intel, some of, again some of these are kind of dated, Freescale Semiconductor, Advanced Micro Devices, AMD, they've all targeted their microprocessor for high-end embedded markets. The thing with it though is that they must conserve power and space um, for them to be integrated with an I.O., a COM port, and ROM. Using the x86 has an advantage of a shortened develop time and is ideal for many applications um, like MS-DOS and the Windows platform. In choosing a microcontroller for a specific system, um, you have to look at the particular, um, the, the particular device what its architecture is, what it's designed for, um, and come up with a, uh, an idea for how you want to implement that. So we'll talk about that a little bit in the, uh, in the next video.